Hello everyone, Johnny Hurricane here from GamersHeroes.com and why don't you sit back, relax, and let me tell you about Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. Now I'm just going to start off and say that we did get a code from the publisher and I also have not played this one before. I've played many other Tales games, but this is the only one that I haven't got to. The world of Vesperia is not a friendly one to humans. Beasts and other monsters roam the world and attack humans and their villages. To counter this, the humans use what are known as Blastia. These are magical cores that can create barriers and other magical effects that help humans survive in this wild world. While larger Blastia cores are attached to towns to help build barriers and things like that, smaller ones are equipped to humans so they can use magical abilities known as arts. There's various forms of arts. There are, for instance, ranged magic attacks, support spells, healing arts, and then of course strike arts, which our main character, Yuri Lowell, uses. When the game starts, Yuri is in his home and he is alerted to a Blastia core that has been stolen from a fountain near his house. This causes the fountain to start spurting a ton of water and flood the area. Yuri's not a rich guy, he lives in the slums with a lot of the other poor individuals, and of course the higher ups don't really care about this, this isn't their problem. However, there is one man named Flynn, a knight, who normally deals with this type of thing, but he is currently out of town. This leaves it to Yuri to go find the Blastia himself. While looking for the Blastia core and the Blastia core thief, Yuri ends up in the noble area of the town and eventually gets caught breaking and entering into a nobleman's house. This of course gets him arrested and he is tossed into jail. That is quickly dealt with as a man in the next cell over hands you a key as he is being escorted out of the cell. While escaping the castle, Yuri runs into a young woman named Estelle. She is looking for Flynn to warn him about something. She doesn't really let you know what that is, but you also know Flynn and you are wondering why she's looking for him. Long story short, you help her out, she helps you out, and then you two escape the castle together. Yuri realizes that the Blastia core thief has left town and Estelle needs to leave town to find Flynn. The two of them, along with Yuri's dog Rapide, leave and the journey finally begins. As stated earlier, the world is not really safe for humans to be traveling around in, so you will be attacked on the overworld quite often, so expect a lot of combat in this game. Combat in this game is a little bit different from your traditional JRPG. It's not turn-based, it's real-time. However, the battles are instants, so when you run into an enemy, it has a quick load screen and then you go into a smaller map to fight your enemies. The game is really about building higher combos and doing max damage to your enemies. Early on, it's kind of hard to build combos just because you're limited in your abilities, but as you go on, you can build higher and higher combos. It's not a game that really requires you to do super complex combos either. You can get through the game without very much issue just doing pretty simple combos. However, if you want to go above and beyond, I don't want to like compare it to Devil May Cry or something like that, but you can do some pretty crazy combos if you know what you're doing. It is important to note that you are not forced to play Yuri in combat. You can play as any of the characters. There are instances where it's like, hey, everyone else is away and you do have to play Yuri, but those are pretty rare. So you can pick any of your teammates that you want. You can pick other frontline fighters like Carol and Judith, pick Estelle who is good at support magic and healing. Rita, who's a mage, great AoE damage, or even someone like Patty or Raven, who excel both at ranged and melee combat. You're not forced to play Yuri, but Yuri does kind of feel like the main character. Even in combat, it seems like his combos just mesh the best together. There's a lot of other things you can do in Vesperia, crafting, cooking, large monster hunting, side quests, there's even an arena. One of the things you have to pay attention to though is the weapon skills. Weapon skills are earned by using certain weapons enough times to learn the skills. When you have the weapon equipped, you automatically have that skill. But when you change out of it, you lose that skill unless you have mastered it. When you master it, you can then equip it. But you only have a certain amount of points you can spend on it, so you have to pick and choose which ones you want. This encourages you to use different weapons to learn different skills, or maybe even stick with one because you like a particular skill but don't have the points to use it. Crafting is very simple as well. You just go to any weapon shop guy and, or even an item shop and go to synthesis. The items that you can craft will be listed right there. The materials that you need will also be listed. I never really had a problem going out looking for the items I needed. As long as you kill enough enemies along the way from town to town and enough new enemies, 
you're not really gonna have to grind for any of the basic gear. Some of the more advanced gear, yes, but stuff to just keep you going won't be that bad. Sometimes while wandering the world, you will run into the Wonder Chef, a guy who basically hides in plain sight with these very obvious objects. When you interact with them, he gives you a new cooking recipe and the items to cook said recipe. Cooking is a way for you to restore HP, TP, which is your mana, and also give you certain buffs for uh, battles. Most of the time, they are a success. Early on, when you guys aren't really good at cooking, sometimes they will mess up. But as you go, they will master the recipes and they will be worth doing pretty consistently. The arena in the game is mainly used, at least at first, for story purposes but it also becomes open later for you to fight just enemies in general and be rewarded for doing so. There's also some side quests attached to it, which I really like. I don't know why, but sometimes when people, when developers put an arena in the game, they forget that after the story part, maybe you want to come back and do that. Not here. You get to come back and fight various enemies. Um, there is an 100 man melee at one point if you can unlock it. So things get pretty crazy in the arena. One of the other side things that you can do in the game is to hunt these very large monsters. Uh, they have a ton of HP, a ton of defense, attack, all of that. So if you're not prepared when you go into the fight, you will most likely get smoked. The first one you run into is kind of like a bait, like, hey, yeah, you can check it out. But you also need to remember that you can run. Later on, obviously, when you start fighting them, things aren't as bad and you can take them out. They give great experience and are normally protecting some valuable items or even gold. So it's always worth it if you find them to take them out. All of the DLC that was released in Japan that did not make it to America is in this version of the game. The Patty DLC is here so you can get her as a teammate and you can use her uh, in your party. There is one little issue with this, at least in the English dub. They used a different voice actor for Yuri. So sometimes when you jump from one cutscene to another, it's like, oh, that's very obviously someone else. It's nothing that breaks the game. It's something that you'll notice though. You also get a bunch of different outfits for all the characters. You get a ton of gold if you want. You don't have to collect these, but most of them don't have a big issue in the game. There are things like free levels. Those obviously affect the game. Recipes for powerful weapons, an insane amount of money, and all the ingredients to craft everything pretty much right away. If you're looking for the pure experience, you're going to want to avoid at least the gold, the levels, and the recipes. Outfits don't really change much. You can just do those if you want. Any fan of JRPGs or even Tales fans that might have missed this game won't be disappointed to head back and play the definitive edition of Tales of Vesperia. Despite its age, the game still holds up very well in 2019. Alright, that will do it for me. If you liked what you saw, please comment, subscribe, like, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later, Gators.